Hello everybody and welcome back. So today I'm putting myself in a scary imaginary situation. I don't know what happened, but my makeup collection is gone and I'm going to tell you which products I would go out and repurchase first. I don't know what happened to my makeup collection. I didn't want to say anything that could happen, say like a fire, which is my biggest fear. So instead I've landed on the Underminer from Incredibles 2. Came in here, sucked up all my makeup and drilled a big hole into the ground. <laughs> Now I'm picturing a Yassified underminer and I might have to create a Photoshop edit so you can see what I'm seeing in, in here. So I actually filmed this video, I think two or maybe three years ago. So today's going to be the updated version. So before we dive into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. Now looking at my edit, I have a good mixture of drugstore and higher end products, but let's start off with primers and they're actually all drugstore primers. And while I was picking out products for this video, I realized that most of the primers I have in my collection are from the drugstore. But these are the three I would jump out of bed. What? <laughs> But these are the three that I would purchase first. First being the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer because this does the impossible. <laughs> it does so much for me. It mattifies my skin, it blurs out my skin, it makes for a really long wearing makeup, it does it all. And it's also a silicone free primer which is really interesting because it blurs like a silicone primer would. I would argue it blurs even more than a classic silicone primer. You only need a tiny bit for it to really provide you a smooth base. I've been a huge fan of this for over a year for sure. The next one is the Power Grip Primer. I was debating between this and the Milk Hydro Grip, but since I would probably want to keep a good budget, I would go for this one. It's practically the exact same product. This one is a bit thicker in consistency and it feels more hydrating, which I do enjoy, but it does grip your makeup down just as good as its inspiration. So that would be my super long wearing primer choice. And the last one here is a glow booster, which I could also use as a liquid highlighter if I wanted to. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I've spoken so much about this product recently on my channel, but it would, it would make it in here. I love this product because it's a multi-use thing. You can use it as a skin tint even. So I think it'd be a great option to have in a restart kit. <laughs> Next up for bases, I would probably go out and grab a foundation and a skin tint right away. And it took me a while to decide on these two here, but I asked myself which ones have been in my collection the longest or the ones that have been the most reliable. And for my foundation, I actually picked the Armani Luminous Silk just because this one is also very adjustable. I can go in with a tiny amount and it still corrects my skin really nicely or I can build it up for like a full coverage look if I wanted to. And it also works well with every product I've tried it with. It's super reliable. I love how it makes my skin look super blurred and gorgeous. <laughs> it just is the perfect foundation base and it's been a favorite of mine for a very long time. So this would be the foundation I would run out and get. And for my skin tint, it came very close to the Rose Ink Skin Enhance or the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. But I landed on the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body just because it's a bit adjustable as well. If you apply it with a brush, you can get a very Glossier skin tint kind of vibe, just a very subtle glowy dewy base that subtly corrects redness or you can apply it with your fingertips and kind of emulsify the product and it adds more coverage. So that's why I went with this one. It's less fussy than the Rose Ink one, but it gives me a similar vibe. Moving on to concealers, which this category I think was the toughest for me to decide because I go towards different concealers for different jobs. So I have three in front of me. The first one being the LYS Triple Fix. This one was an easy pick for me. This has become one of my favorite concealers and in the beginning I wasn't too sure about it. I feel like I had a slow love build for this one. Now I would consider it one of my top three favorites. This one for sure replaced my love for the Kosas Revealer Concealer. It does a similar thing for me, but I find that this one wears better and it doesn't expire as quickly, which that is a really heartbreaking thing about the Kosas one. It just turns on you way too quickly. I love that one to bits. It, it's heartbreaking for me to say this, but it just expires way too fast. But this is my alternative, which good news, I like it more. And I also find that this one is quite adjustable. It works really well with higher coverage makeups or your most natural looks. And it also spot cracks really beautifully as well. So this 
was an easy pick for me, but I also wanted to add in the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser. I felt like it needed to be in here. I love using this when I don't wanna go in with foundation and I just wanna brighten up my under eyes or it just works with any look as well. I just adore this thing. It's been such a favorite of mine for many, many years. I've gone through so many little tubes of this and it's awesome just to use as like a little skin tint if you want to. So I feel like that needed to be in this video. I wasn't comfortable without it. <laughs> and the last one I have is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Just because this one I like to use as a spot correcting concealer. It's not my absolute favorite under my eyes. I do really enjoy it there, but most of all a spot corrector. And I am acne prone, so I always need to have something like this on hand. I would for sure grab that for this. It has that beautiful matte finish, so it doesn't bring attention to your spots because sometimes when you add some concealers that have a bit more of a glowy finish, they can accentuate it because now your zits are glowing. That doesn't happen with this. It cuts the shine and minimizes the look of it and blurs them out. Moving on to powders, these are probably the most predictable in this video. I tried to not be so predictable, but I am who I am. So first one being the Pat McGrath Under Eye Powder. I don't have a makeup collection without this. This is probably one of my top five favorite products of all time. I've had so many of them. It's just the best under eye powder and I love how this one is translucent so it's not going to add another filter to your concealer, which is really important for me on no makeup makeup days. It just makes it look more natural, but it makes whatever I set it with last a long time. It's one of the most blurring powders I have ever used. It's incredible. Yeah, it needed to be in here. The next one is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Powder. This one is very similar to this one's blurring qualities, but this one has that filtered look, which is nice when you're doing a full face of makeup. I love how this one blurs, but it also mattifies my skin so beautifully. It doesn't take all of the hydration away, but it keeps your skin looking nice and mattified and long lasting. It's an incredible powder. I've talked about this too much on my channel. <laughs> and the last one I would have is the Kosas Cloud Set, which I would say is pretty similar to the e.l.f. one here, but this one has a little pearlescence running through it, so it's a little bit more luminous and it doesn't completely mattify my skin. And also this is one of the powders I turn to if I make makeup mistakes, if I add too much blush, I like to add a sheer veil of this and it takes down the blush the perfect amount. And this one is one of my favorites to turn to when I need to retouch my face if I've gotten too oily. It just blots my face perfectly. I needed to have three. I don't love powders that that much, but the powders that I do love, I am just obsessed with them, <laughs> truly. Moving on to contour, I would only have one, and that would be the Fenty Beauty Match Sticks in the shade Amber. It took a lot for me not to include Amber Suede, which I've been loving so much recently, but I think I would choose this over that one for my contour. And I chose the Match Sticks version over the compact version or even the e.l.f putty bronzer version because this one could be more adjustable. I like how it's a cream, but it also has a beautiful matte finish. So you can add a lot of it to get more of a dramatic look, or you can use a tiny amount and it will be very impactful. Um, I just thought the matte finish of this would be a lot more versatile compared to the dewier finish that the e.l.f. and um, compact version of Amber would be, <laughs> would have would offer me. <laughs> Moving on to bronzer though, I wanted to have a cream option and a powder option. So my cream obviously would be the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. This is one of my all-time favorite makeup products as well. It is so beautiful. It's so subtly defining, but it does so much. And it's also super long wearing and it's just so easy to work with. You don't even need to look into a mirror. It practically blends itself out with a couple taps with a brush. It's truly magic in a pan, it truly is. And my powder option would be the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer the Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. I love this one because it looks like a cream but it has the benefits of a powder because it has this gorgeous soft pearl within it and it reflects the light subtly but in the most beautiful way. This is also another bronzer that I don't really have to panic about how it's going to blend out. It always has the softest edges and it looks really natural and always gorgeous. I recently did the most extra combo these three products but forget about it it was so nice so extra you do not need to wear three cheek defining products but i did one day and it was stunning now moving on to blush let's just say i reserved a huge budget 
for blush. This was an easy section <laughs> just because I was taking them out of my collection just like this. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't not have all of these, you know, like these would comfort me after that traumatic incident with the underminer. So <laughs> number one, super easy, very predictable. I would have the Rose Ink blushes. These are the three that I've been loving the most. I haven't really bonded with the three new ones that I've purchased. I'm still so in love with the original lineup. My first love, Fox Glove, Fox Love. Yeah, my perfect, perfect blush shade. Then Heliotrope became my second love, which is a beautiful soft pink. And mixing these two together, you get a beautiful combo. And then this one recently became a big favorite of mine, Azalea. See, I have a good range here. They're not very similar. They're just all stunning and you can use them on your lips. So I'd need to have all three shades. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I would at least need to have one of them, but I couldn't decide which one. I'm sick. I'm sick in the head when it comes to blush. <laughs> that's, that's just what this is. Um, next one I would want to have would be the Patrick Ta Oh She's Different blush. I adore this one so much as well. I love that you get a cream and a powder and this color. So there's the powder and there's the cream. I just love this formula so much and I love its versatility because you can have fun with it. Use either side alone or mix them together. So fun to play around with. And the last blush I would have is the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush. I can't. This is so pigmented. I swear I'm going to have this for life. You only need the tiniest amount and it's so pigmented. I think I would pick up the shade Believe. This is my most used one, but I do like to mix it in with Hope or Encourage. I like to blend them together to create my own shade, but I think this would be the color I would pick up first. I love this formula. It's so pigmented, like I just said, but it also wears so well. It's like a liquid lipstick for your cheeks. It truly is. It just is gonna stay there all day. It's not gonna fade, and it's going to remain looking beautiful and glowy and dewy. It's just gorgeous. But those would be my blushes. <laughs> now let's move on to highlighter. So we already discussed that this could be used as my liquid highlighter. So I only have one powder one and I landed on the Ilia Decades Daylight Highlighting Powder. This is still my favorite powder highlight after all of these years. It's super finely milled. The color is the perfect kind of brighter champagne gold. I'm gonna do like a thicker swatch so you can really see its color and undertone and finish. But I just love the way it sinks into my makeup. It looks like a cream, but it has those powder benefits. It's going to be very long wearing, um, which is nice to put on top of other cream products, especially if you're using like a lot of cream bronzer and blushes. It's nice to have something that's going to be more long wearing. Now for brows, I would still have these two products. These are pretty much the only products I've been using in my brows for like the last year or so, even longer probably ever since they came out, honestly. I would have the Kosas Brow Pop. I love the shape of this brow pencil and you get a nice handy um, spoolie on the end. I like how it's like a miniature little triangle so you can fill in your brows a couple different ways. You can add hair-like strokes, you can fill it in really quickly if you flip it on its side or you can get a really nice defined thin line if you flip, if you flip it on its other side. <laughs> Whoa. And then for my brow gel recently, I've been using just a clear brow gel over whatever I fill in my brows with. So I've been subbing for the Air Brow in Clear, which it doesn't look very clear anymore, does it? <laughs> it looks kind of gross, but I've been loving this brow gel. It just offers the perfect amount of hold and fluff. Um, they do call this a laminating brow gel, which I would argue it does not do that, but it does offer a good amount of hold. And for my eye primer, I would just go to my old faithful, the Fenty Beauty Eye Primer. It's just the best, especially if you have oily eyelids. I've given this speech so many times before on my channel, but it's truly the best to provide you with a super waxy barrier between your lid and your eyeshadow look. I don't experience any creasing with this. It's awesome. It's incredible. Now moving on to eyes, I think I would only pick up one eyeshadow palette. I don't think I would rebuild my collection with colorful things right off the bat. I think that would come a little bit later, but the eyeshadow palette I decided to include is the Charlotte Tilbury, the Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. I've been loving this one. I feel like you get everything you need in one little palette and I love the finish of these eyeshadows. They're very different. They're not really mattes nor satins, they're just different. But they have like this really pretty soft glow within them. 
They're so easy to blend and they're perfect neutral shades. So whatever I'm doing that day, depending on whatever blush I decide to wear or whatever lipstick I decide to wear, it's gonna look good. And because those are all kind of matte-ish looking shades, I would grab one of the M Cosmetics Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. These are my favorite shimmer shades. I think I would pick up the shade Wish, but my two favorite shades are Moonrise and Wish. I'll swatch them quickly. Wish is this gorgeous, kind of warmer golden shade right there. There was a phase earlier this year that I used this in every single one of my videos. I just, I adore them. And here is Moonrise. It's kind of a more cooler toned version. It has kind of a pinky hue to it. Kind of taupey. So there's the base shades, Wish and Moonrise. Look at that shine. And you can really shoot them out for like a glossy effect or you can put them on full on like this and it won't enhance your texture of your lids. They're the best. Now for my eyeliners, I have three and two of them are the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Smoky Liners. I would grab I would grab the brown and the black. These are very versatile liners. You can create very smoky looks. That's their main purpose, of course, and they do it flawlessly. You can also use these as cream eyeshadows if you wanted to. They're also really long wearing in the waterline. They don't fade easily. And you can also use a brush with them to create sharp liners. And they're also on the more affordable side. They're just some of the best liners I have come across in my career. And then I would also have a little nudie eye pencil and I would grab the Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline Eye Pencil in the shade Ivory. I love this one, it's a bit more vibrant but the consistency is so creamy and I like to highlight my eyes with them, especially if I do like double winged eyeliner looks. I like to use this to clean it up or highlight my inner corner with it. I'll do that right now. I forgot to put an inner corner highlight, I just realized. They don't dry quickly, you have a lot of work time. I was really considering adding cocoa in here, but if I had the Maybelline brown, I wouldn't need the Melt Brown too. And now for mascara, I would just have this one here. This is the Makeup Forever Professional. This also wears beautifully on my upper lashes and my lower lashes and it doesn't smudge or flake. And I love how you can get different lash effects using this mascara. You can use one side to get a super volumized look or the other for a little quick lash tint look or you can just customize your own recipe with it. It's really fun to play around with, but most importantly, it works on my upper and lower lashes without the smudging. So it's nice to have it all in one little thing. And now moving on to the lip category, which is a tough one for me as well. Starting off with lip liners, I would have these three for sure. For my pink option, I would have Pinky Brown from Huda Beauty. The Lip Contour 2.0s are gorgeous. The formula is so nice and creamy, but it does eventually set down and it wears a really long time. This is a perfect match to my natural lip color, so I've loved this. And it also kind of enhances the pinky tones of other lip products I am going to shortly mention here. Next, I would like to have one that kind of contours my lips or I can just throw on and it would suit all of my other lip products and that would be my Melt Cosmetics Perfectionist Lip Pencil in the shade Bare. This one is like a nice nudie brown for my skin tone. It has a little bit of a yellowy undertone so it suits my undertone quite well. Um, I think it's very flattering and it works for a lot of different lip colors and it also looks amazing just paired with a clear gloss. And my last lip liner would be the Makeup Forever Anywhere Caffeine Lip Liner. I've kind of put this one on hold. I find that it's kind of a perfect mixture of these two with a little bit of something else in there. You see what I'm saying? Ever since Hailey Bieber mentioned this, it's been sold out. So I've been reserving this one for special occasions because I cannot go without it. <laughs> Hailey Bieber, why you do that? Why you do that? Everything she mentions, it sells out. And it happens to be products I, I really like as well. Mix mascara. And now let's move on to my lip section, which is kind of, she's girthy. It's a little bit, there's a lot here. So I would have my two favorite MAC shades. I'm a huge MAC gal. I've been for many, many years, probably my whole life. My mom was a huge MAC girl. Um, these are probably the first lipsticks that ever graced my lips. Uh, you know, when I would go into my mom's bathroom and snatch her makeup. Uh, I did that quite a bit and it was, I think it was the shade Verve. She used to wear Verve a lot. Anyways, I would have Teddy 2.0 in the Powder Kiss lipstick. This is my favorite nude lipstick. It's so cute. It's a little bit peachy. It's a little bit pinky, but depending on what you're, what else you're wearing, it kind of adjusts to those tones. And I would have another Powder Kiss in the shade Stay Curious. 
this is one of my all-time favorite colors. I feel like that's such a me color. And it looks beautiful paired with the foxglove. And the mixture of these two, beautiful. A little bit of this on the outskirts, a little bit of this in the inner part. For my clear gloss, I would have my Kosas Wet Lip Oil. This is my favorite clear gloss. I feel like it gives the perfect amount of shine. It's really nice and hydrating and nourishing, um, and it's very comfortable to wear. There's no stickiness. I don't know why I swatched a clear gloss, but there you go. Um, <laughs> she glossy. And I would also have the tinted gloss from Tower 28 in the shade Sesame. This has become my favorite gloss of theirs. It's such a gorgeous, deeper, dusty rose. It's so pretty. And their gloss formula is so nice. It adds such a thicker layer to your lips. It gives a lacquered look. It fills in your lip lines. It adds so much glow. If you haven't tried them yet, I highly suggest that you do. They're truly worth the hype. And for a tinted lip balm, I feel like I would need the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glows. I couldn't decide what shade, so today I threw in Rose Glow, but my other favorite is Bronze Glow, which I'll quickly swatch. The underminer did not take my makeup yet. I can swatch that. I probably would have both. I should have just included both from the get-go. And then I would have a lip stain, and I love, love, love these. These are some of my all-time favorite lip products. These are the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stains, and I would have the shade Power Mauves, which is kind of like a lip stain version of the MAC Stay Curious and Teddy 2.0 mixture right here. You see what I mean? I just quickly re-swatched them right there. But yeah, it's kind of a similar vibe, hey? But it stains your lips. Those would be my lip products of choice. And there we have it. These are all of the products I would run out and grab if I lost my entire collection. And I know this is on the extra side. There's a lot of products I wouldn't necessarily need, but I'm such a makeup lover. These are the products that I would really want to have again. This was such a fun and kind of scary concept, but I would love for it to make its way through beauty YouTube again. I'd be so curious to see what my other favorite YouTubers first picks would be. Don't you? I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like and I'll make sure to link all of the products that I mentioned in today's video in the description down below. So feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.